Welcome back to Smart Money. Today we're talking about the rising rates globally and the impact it will have on asset classes. Now, theoretically, rising rates is negative for equities, but history has showed us that this is not the case. In fact, in the last many years, as Kirtan Shah, our guest, was just pointing out, uh, despite a rising rate situation, the equity market has done well, and he says that this time will be no different. But now, let's talk about some other asset classes, fixed income, for example. Uh, Kirtan, tell us, you know, rising rates is also negative for debt, theoretically, right? Uh, so if one wants to in say you know take up some fixed income as a part of their portfolio how does one position itself in this rising rate environment so sonia like you rightly pointed out uh, rising interest rates uh, would have a ne negative impact on debt uh, the logic uh, is very simple imagine if you've invested in a fixed deposit today paying you a low five percent interest rate and you lock yourself in for three years and if interest rate starts to move up you don't get the advantage of the rising interest rate, but because you are still locked in at the lower five percent, and that's how that's how uh, debt reacts negatively in a rising interest rate situation. So typically, the the simpler way to position yourself in fixed income right now, if you are expecting interest rates to go up, is probably staying at the lower end of the curve. What I mean, uh, what I mean by that is try and invest in a way that the average maturity of your fixed income is much lower. Because how, how that helps you is uh, the lower you keep the uh, average maturity, at every maturity, when you are supposed to redeploy that investment, you probably might get a higher rate because the interest rate in the economy is going up. So one way of positioning yourself in fixed income, Sonia, right now is to keep keep your average maturities or investment time frame lower while you're trying to do fixed income at this point in time. And if there is somebody who wants to still stay invested in fixed income for a longer period of time in a rising interest rate situation, you typically do something called as barbell. What's a barbell? Barbell is a very simple strategy where you put 50% of your money at the lower end of the curve, right? which is uh, uh, lower maturities. And you put 50% of your money at the higher end of the curve, which is higher maturities. Historically, if you go back, you would see that every time yields have gone up, this particular strategy over a long term has really worked out well instead of taking position only at the lower end or the higher end of the curve. So if you want to keep it simple, stay invested in lower average maturities. Every time you will you will be able to redeploy the cash at a higher rate in a rising situation. But uh, if at all you want to stay in fixed income for a longer period of time, then probably barbell is a better strategy to deploy somewhere. Okay, so that's on the fixed income side. I also wanted to understand what should the good strategy be as far as gold is concerned because you know, gold has been rising as uh, uh, risky assets lose a bit of favor. Uh, at this point, I mean somewhere around 47, 48,000 rupees uh, per 10 gram on gold. Is it still a good bet for the long-term investor? Uh, Sonia, I think gold can be a very interesting proposition at this point in time is because again, historically we've seen uh, gold brings in the diversification advantage. So if in the near term, while while we are saying that because of policy rates going up, we might see some volatility in equities in the near term, gold will definitely have that advantage where money will move from a risk on mode to a risk off mode to, to gold. Uh, of course, we've also seen that whenever there is a large uh, debasement happening uh, globally and we've seen how uh, Fed's balance sheet has ballooned over a period of time. So much of liquidity, so much of money getting printed also works in favor of gold is because your traditional currency is losing uh, appetite and value is where a lot of money moves towards gold. And also, typically in a negative uh, real rate uh, environment, gold really does well. And we see all of these three cases that I pointed out currently happening or expected to happen over the next two, three, four quarters. And I think gold uh, should definitely do well and should be a part of uh, active uh, portfolios if there is new money to be deployed at this point, Swami. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I want to understand what are the key takeaways from, you know, the, this discussion that we had. And more importantly, we're getting a lot of queries on uh, social media. So, Ketan, I wanted to toss one of them to you. You started by saying that, you know, this is still a good time uh, to invest in equities with a two to three year horizon. Now, suppose there are new investors coming into the market and they have a two to three year, you know, time frame and they're looking to invest through the mutual fund route. What are the top two or three mutual funds, both large and mid cap mutual funds or even small cap for that matter? Matter that you would advise them? So I think Sonia, like you rightly pointed out, uh, I would sincerely suggest anybody who's uh, looking at anything less than three years to not venture into equities right now, coming with at least a three-year, five-year view. 
uh, uh, look in my opinion uh, while you are trying while you are a newbie and trying to invest uh, in equities the first suggestion is try and follow an asset allocation depending on your risk appetite now assuming that these things are taken care of i think on the large cap front uh, uh, i think i really like the mirai large cap uh, mid cap i like the axis mid cap fund and on the small cap i like the sbi small cap i think these are my top 3 picks if at all somebody is looking at doing uh, a large mid or a small cap investing so yeah okay and since the hot topic of the season is exposure into these uh, funds that have you know uh, in exposure in global companies right global tech companies uh, the new technology companies whether it's clean energy whether it's electric vehicles any of those funds that you like and if yes the top 2 or 3 that you know stand out for you so again sonia look uh, you can largely take exposure directly investing in nasdaq through a lot of these etfs or index funds that uh, motila loswal and group and all of these other fund houses really have but in my opinion uh, you know if if at all you don't want to take a very large exposure to international equity or international investing i think taking a, a investment bet through a fund like a ppfas flexi cap fund which would typically have a 25% 30 35% exposure to international equities and specifically on the tech side would would really solve your uh, uh, investment requirement at large because if at all from your portfolio you've allocated let's say 25% of your uh, investment to a ppfas flexi cap which in turn is investing 30 odd percent in uh, global equities a 7 and a half percent 10% of your portfolio indirectly gets exposed to to international equities that's one and also because this is a domestic fund uh, on this exposure of international equity that you are taking you will still be taxed as as equity unlike if you take exposure to any of these other products that i spoke to you of internationally you will be taxed as debt so i think if you want to take exposure up to 5 10% uh, in global companies take exposure through a domestic fund like a ppfx flexi cap fund you will get exposure also and also at the same time your uh, your tax uh, will work out to be more more favorable for you which is equity unlike uh, debt if you take uh, direct uh, exposure to international equities also i feel uh, you know some exposure to uh, uh, emerging economies like uh, taiwan and also for for that matter china can also be taken given where given where global equities are at uh, uh you know historical highs where china is available at a 40% discount i think uh, uh, maybe through an advice greater uh, china fund you can really get exposure to china as well as uh, taiwan uh, in the same basket i think that is something also somebody can look at if at all international equity is something that uh, is on your mind in terms of investments okay that's very very helpful uh, especially you know the list of mutual funds that you have given us it's really helpful for our viewers especially the new generation who's perhaps just entered into the market and wants to know how to uh, find their fee thanks a lot kitan for joining us as always pleasure speaking to you and it is an important week for us right we're celebrating our 22nd birthday on cnbc tv 18 so once again to all our viewers thanks so much for your patronage till we meet again stay safe